All right, hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about clothing, All right? So in the summertime, in the winter, in a rainy environment, uh, we have to wear certain things, especially in class. And certain people show up, uh, especially if it's their first class and not know what to wear. And sometimes they're uh, either confused by it at first or don't understand how long they're gonna be out in the sun or in the rain or in the cold. And so I wanted to go over a few things and kind of get people a little bit more educated on it and also it gives somebody to uh, that hasn't done this before uh, some kind of starting point so if you don't spend a lot of time out outside or in the outdoors and you still want to come to a shooting class most good classes are outdoors not to say there's not indoor ones there's obviously indoor ones as well um, but the, the you get the the most you know bang for your buck when you could shoot in different directions and be outdoors for a little bit um, it's also some somewhat good for your health to be outside versus inside compared to uh, on ranges. So when, when we talk about that, like let's talk about like what do we wear, right? So in the summertime, uh, I think it's uh, very important to understand what you're going to wear and how you're going to take care of yourself. So first off, like I like to kind of cover up so that I'm not exposed to the elements as easily. Um, so, so there's some variations that you can do and some, some things you can, uh, take from this. Hopefully it'll make some sense and then give you some ideas. So first off, like, uh, I get a lot of guys, especially in the summertime, wearing some kind of lightweight short. Um, these are from cool. Uh, they're, they're very good shorts. I actually wear them all the time. I like wearing shorts. I live in South Florida. It's very humid and, uh, and hot all year round usually. And shorts are like my normal attire, but on the range, uh, wearing shorts, you want to be aware of the fact that you may be facing the sun or away from the sun and burning your legs. So a lot of people forget to put sunscreen on their actual calves, on their shins, on the on the sides of their legs, and uh, and cover up at least that. And if you think about it, right, like I, I get it, like sunscreen is not cool or anything, but think about like what you're doing yourself and how you're getting burned and for the even whiter people and i i don't have to fall into that category but i still get crispy every once in a while um it just gets brown instead of pink and red and uh <laughs> and for those that get pink and red shorts may not be your best bet i get it it's hot but you're not you're not gaining a lot from wearing shorts versus pants and we'll talk about it from uh, as as we go but shorts for for example i'll only wear shorts if i'm maybe doing a, a quick match in the morning or if i'm just going to the range by myself and just want to practice real quick nothing crazy but uh, just realize that you do need to cover up at least with sunscreen on your legs and stuff to, to give yourself or provide yourself a little bit of protection because it does get uh, spicy, right? Especially after after a couple hours of being out there, it'll get uncomfortable and you'll stop thinking about class. You'll start thinking about your legs. So shorts, an option, but I, I prefer to go away from them. Uh, most of the time I'll be wearing pants, right? So longer pants. Um, these are some lightweight hiking ones from Cool. Um, I like these. I, I forget the name of the actual flavor, but I may put them down. Oh, no, no idea what flavor we're, we're wearing. It's one of the lightweight hiking versions. So I wear lightweight hiking pants versus uh, more tactical pants the majority of the time because one, they I can like go anywhere with them, but two, the lightweight hiking pants usually have zippers and venting and stuff like that, which some of the, the more tactical or combat pants have, but just something to think about the materials lighter. It's meant for you to be outdoors. It's meant to dry fast. It's kind of nice to wear these, especially summertime or in like rainy weather and stuff like that. It's one of my favorite types of pants to wear they have zippers on the side which uh, provide some airflow and if i really really wanted to i can kind of roll up the bottoms and get a little bit of airflow near my ankles and and kind of cool myself off as much as possible there um, but if you're getting to that point you probably should be taking off your boots or shoes and airing off your feet and getting getting them colder or cooling them down in some way you don't want to become a heat casualty now going further from there we also have the option of some kind of tactical pant and these are some cries that i've had for uh, a really long time and i wear them on mostly uh colder environments right so uh when i have to wear a layer underneath them because they are thicker and they're these are the gen threes that are really thick uh versus the gen fours that have some kind of like pass-throughs and meshiness 
and personally i do like them i do wear them but if i have to opt for these or the hiking pants there's there's a definite weight difference and then there's also just the heat that I'm gonna retain with the cry pants versus the heat I retain with some lightweight hiking pants. So something to think about, especially on the legs part of things, making sure that you take care of yourself because whether you go with shorts and you have to sunscreen a lot or you wear lightweight hiking pants, you don't have to sunscreen, but you get some venting, but you do cover up your entire leg or you go with the hot pants that have a ton of pockets. So it's versatile, but it's not, in my opinion, not the best call. Uh, just in, in my experience going and being outside for 10 plus hours at a time, uh, teaching on a range or being a student on a range, uh, lightweight pants are usually the way to go. So something to think about as, as you go through this journey to go learning, right? Now, going from there, right, uh, let's talk about feet real quick, right? So, so your feet, depending on the type of shoe you like to wear, um, I would I would gauge it based off of the environment I'm in. If I know I'm in a drier environment, it's not going to rain. I, there's no chance of rain. I'll go ahead and play around with some kind of like lighter weight shoe or something like that that I could be outdoors with, uh, because the lighter weight shoe is going to be nicer for my feet and be able to like you know move around. I, I'll be a little bit more versatile. It'll look usually they're more normal shoes, uh, but things to think about there are making sure that you're not stepping in mud and puddles and not have enough like uh, traction on the bottom or stepping in a puddle and now you have wet feet all day. So something to think about when it comes to shoes is still getting something that's Gore-Tex based or Gore-Tex lining or Gore-Tex lined, sorry. Um, I like using these Salewe boots. These trainers are really nice. They, they're high tops, so that seems weird at first, but uh, I prefer them because then my pants don't ride up and expose a piece of my ankle to the sun for a long duration of time. They also don't get hung up on things. And if I step in deeper water, right, these will stop water up to about here-ish. So I would say almost four inches deep worth of water that I can step into with those and be out in the rain and have dry feet. So I'm a big fan of Gore-Tex boots. They are hotter, so something to think about there for those of you that have like super warm feet already. Uh, so you may wanna just go with lighter weight shoes that are Gore-Tex. Um, these are not, these Ultimas, they just drain water really easy. So if you do step in it, it'll drain them really fast, it won't pool. Um, the other thing too is being able to change those socks. So depending on what kind of socks you wear, uh, I stick to mostly like merino wool style. Um, sometimes some synthetic stock uh, or socks, but uh, mostly merino wool. I stay away from cotton. Uh, cotton, when it gets wet, it gets smelly, it gets disgusting. These uh, wool style socks usually um, uh, offer you quick drying if you take them off. And I, I'll take them off, I'll hang them in the sun when I'm like swap, swapping pants or swapping boots if I need to, like when I'm hiking. Or if you're on the range, you can now lay these out, put on some clean pair, which you'll be surprised at the morale boost of a clean set of socks, even in wet shoes. Um, but uh, but you'll actually help yourself out there. So depending on the type of socks you like, I, I would I would go for something that's more on the synthetic or the wool side uh, because of the fact that they dry quicker and they won't be as like smelly. They won't sit there with the gunk like cotton does. Um, as the quote goes, cotton is rotten. Um, going back to shoes real quick, uh, another thing to kind of think about too is, uh, like I, I kind of mentioned or uh, alluded to is traction, right, on the range. Uh, I know personally I've fallen, I don't know how many times, almost fell this past weekend uh, running because I'm trying to push myself. And you'll find that the people with like smoother bottom shoes, so if I, if I wore my Vans on, on the... Uh, uh, well, sorry, if I wore my skate vans, which are flat on the bottom with no actual bumpies or traction pieces or whatever you want to call them, I would slip very, very easily. So you want to be careful of that. You don't want to, you don't want to cause injury while you're trying to learn. Um, it's, it's okay if it happens by accident, you know, like it all ha it always happens, but it's one of those things that you want to prevent if you can. And that's usually that way. Another reason I like higher top shoes 
is because I can tighten this upper portion where my ankle is and kind of give myself some ankle support. I have, I've broken my ankles a couple times. Um, you know, look, I, I was, I was a skateboarder for a long time and I did a lot of, uh, damage to my legs. So I try to p take care of, especially my ankles being a weak part of them. Now, uh, lastly, let's talk about the top end, right? So, uh, for a shirt, right? For what I wear on my top or on, on the top is usually some kind of hooded, as you can see, it's kind of like see-through. Hopefully you can kind of see how see-through that is if you can't, sorry. But it's a very thin, very, very lightweight, uh, hooded long sleeve shirt. And what this does is it gives me some sun protection, right? It has like SPF 35 or something like that. Um, it also provides, if it gets wet, it cools me or dries off quickly, kind of a mixture. And then it also, like I said, provides me some coverage to my neck, the back of my head, my, my ears, things like that, that I wouldn't be protecting normally. So I want to make sure I keep the sun off of me. Um, I find that I am warmer when I'm in the sun versus, and, and the sun is beating down on my skin versus I'm covered up and I'm kind of hanging out in the shade, um, my own provided shade. Um, the shirt's from Duck Camp. Um, I don't know anybody there. I don't have a discount code or anything like that. I literally just like their shirts, so I just buy a bunch of them. And they're not inexpensive, but they'll last you a while depending on how much you're outside. And if you go fishing, hiking, other things, they'll be useful for that stuff too, any outdoor stuff, uh, even probably mowing the lawn. So if you're not into long sleeve hooded shirts, obviously you'll have to sunscreen yourself uh, on your arms. And so be prepared for that. If you go to a class that's outdoors, or you can bring some kind of schmog. And a schmog you could use over your head like a hood. You can set it up kind of like just a neck uh, coverage. You can wet them and now you can kind of cool down your entire head. They're a good piece of clothing that a lot of people, obviously the people that live in the desert use them uh, where they're hot and it's sunny almost all the time. Kind of uh, something to think about. They could also keep you somewhat warm in the winter um, and use them as a scarf or something like that. It could help a little bit. But what I used them for mainly was covering up from the sun. Uh, now I stick to more of the hooded shirts. They, they come in handy quite often. And I wear them, you probably see them. If you've seen a picture of me on the range in the recent years, I've probably been wearing a hooded shirt. And if I'm not, it's because I was only there for a couple hours and I was just getting some reps kind of thing. So... Uh, that being said, too, for your head, um, if you're new to shooting on the range, I would highly recommend some kind of headgear, right? Some kind of hat. Um, I've had some people come uh, with boonie style hats, and I've also had people come with like the boonie style hat that has like the mullet thing on the back for fishing, and that helps kind of protect their neck a little bit. Not a bad idea. I think those are great ideas for those people that need a lot of that protection or don't want to wear it in a shirt format. So at least to get some kind of protection there and you can kind of keep the sun off of you as much as possible. And I would also suggest that your hat have some kind of ventilation there, right? If you don't, um, or you don't have any kind of like ventilated hat, it's going to keep you warm pretty long. So remember a lot of heat dissipates from our heads, our armpits, our, our groins, our feet. Um, so we want to make sure that we, we kind of protect them to a certain extent and let them, you know, air off as much as off uh, as often as possible so you're not getting as overheated it's, it's almost every class in the summer that i have at least one person they're like i need a i need to sit down and kind of chill for a sec now other than clothing right we want to talk about a little bit of nutrition beforehand right so uh at least 48 hours uh, to, to bare minimum 24 hours prior to class, you want to start hydrating. And I don't mean just chugging water, right? You need, you need some kind of salt. You need some kind of, um, uh, some kind of sugar of some sort to kind of get yourself kind of, uh, feeling like you're, you're gaining and can, and retaining some water. Uh, if you don't, and I'm not saying like down a bag of gummy bears and then drink a bottle of water and you're hydrated I'm saying like like take the time and have something salty like peanuts or whatever or beef jerky and drink some water maybe maybe throughout the day have a little bit of each um even better is have like a pedialyte before the day before right before you get to bed maybe things like that that you can start to hydrate 
And then while you're at class, you want to continue hydration. So even if you're not thirsty, that's the best time to hydrate because you're not dehydrated yet. So you're just keeping, keeping yourself going. Um, if you're already thirsty while you're outside like that, you're obviously already like dehydrated. So you want to like now speed that up. Having Pedialyte little packets of the powder that you can pour into bottles of water or into a Nalgene or something and then chug that bad boy, you can, you can get a lot of that. Um, there's like liquid IV out there. Those, those work for a certain extent, like they hydrate a bit. They're not a replacement for water. They're just to be an addition to your just drinking water. Um, just chugging Gatorade isn't the solution. It's part of it, right? There still has to be some kind of 50, 50 mix with water. So be careful of just going down the rabbit hole of like, I'll oh, just eat, drink sport drinks all the whole day. Be careful. You're probably not burning enough calories to do that. You're just dehydrating yourself because you're standing out there or running around a little bit. So just be aware it's something important um, because at least in my classes, there are no like lunch breaks. It's straight up get ammo, get water, come back, get ammo, get water, come back. And it's constant uh, throughout the entire day. And mainly that's to keep the op tempo good so I can give you guys all the information I want to give you. But also because like if I let you sit down for too long, we start getting the sleepies and then people start like we start losing humans so uh so i like to keep the op tempo pretty high when it comes to at least the way that i teach so hopefully this makes some sense guys i know this is just the summer flavor of this we'll talk about rain and we'll talk about winter in a different video all right hope that helps guys take care